Thor Prime here, and I'm going to be reviewing the Hobbywing 80 amp speed control with programming card. And here's the box it comes in. Here's the speed controller itself. Um, the box actually looks pretty nice. You get the uh, silver uh, aluminum writing. Um, open it up. Normally, a speed controller would be here. Um, and here's what you get inside. Uh, heat shrink tubing for your motor. A pro a uh, instruction guide, which is color, glossy, and um, impressively easy to read. You also get a warning card about the ability to disable the brake. Um, some stickers and your warranty card. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I forgot to mention actually kind of hidden in here. You also get heat shrink tubing. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to do with that, but you get a lot of heat shrink tubing. Uh, a couple zip ties, some screws, and double-sided tape for mounting the speed controller. I actually mounted it using um, Velcro, which gives you the ability to move it around, play with it a little bit. I find it uh, Velcro works pretty well. Um, it's been through some pretty hard knocks, and the body combined with the Velcro keeps it in place pretty well. Um, before I talk about the performance, I want to talk about the, my buggy here for a moment. It's a Kyosho DBX VE. Um, with the ready to run, you get this 550 size Vortex 10 uh, brushless motor. But unfortunately, the included speed control is pretty crap. Um, it's rated for 70 amps. Um, it's supposed to be able to take a 3S LiPo. Um, but it burned out in less than five minutes when I actually tried that. Um, that was using the same gearing I currently have, which is 11 and 48. Um, the replacement ESC that I got is now in a T3 driving a Castle 5700, and it's perfectly fine there. So I took the Mamba Max from that um, 5700 combo, dropped it in here, and that worked out okay. Uh, the Mamba Max got pretty hot, not over the top hot, but definitely pushing it at the limit. It had some cogging issues, um, both from a standing start and from uh, slow speeds. It was pretty bad. Um, playing with the settings, I just could never get it to work right. And again, that's at the same gearing that we've got set up here on this control. So the Mamba Max worked out for a while, right up until the heatsink came off and it went up in a cloud of magic blue smoke. I was getting tired of this buggy eating speed controllers. So I decided to pick up the Z-Run from HobbyParts.com for 85 bucks, and that was money well spent. Um, the Mama Max was really being pushed to the edge, and this speed controller is not even breaking a sweat. That cogging I was talking about earlier, none with this controller. Uh, once you let it spin a little bit, it's absolutely smooth. Uh, I, I bet with a censored motor, this thing would be an excellent crawler. A crawling speed controller. Um, another cool feature uh, is the setup button. I don't know if you guys can see it, the setup button on the on-off switch. That makes it really easy to work out kinks with your receiver in that you don't have to hold down the trigger and hope when you're trying to get it into programming mode. The only downside of the speed controller is really the physical size. It's a little bit bigger than a Mamba Max in width and length. Um, it has quite a bit of height, but that's mostly due to the fan under the heatsink here. That actually cools it really well. That fan pushes a lot of air. The other cool thing with this speed controller is that you can use this programming card. And this is actually fairly awesome. So let me show you what's inside. It comes with a USB cable for connecting to your computer. This card is so much cooler than all the other programming cards I've tried. Um, I really want to give you a demo here real fast. So.
So I'm going to give you a demo of this uh, professional programming box, um, programming card, uh, field programmer. They go by a lot of names, but um, this one's definitely the best one I've ever seen. Uh, let me show you. You go ahead and connect it up and then flip on the power. Um, sorry, the fan for the speed controller is really loud. I hope it's not drowning me out. But you can actually see it's got the firmware printed here for the program card. And if I hit a button, it's now showing me the firmware version for the speed controller. Now, you can upgrade the firmware uh, on both the programming card and the speed controller. And I would highly recommend doing that. There should be updates for um, both of them if you go out and check on the web. And it's actually pretty cool that Hobbywing is offering updated firmware for these um, items. There's no cryptic LEDs. Instead, you get an actual readable LCD display. Um, you get more than one button. And it's pretty pocketable, pretty small. No jumper blocks like some of the other programming cards out there. And so I'm going to go ahead and run through the items you can change on this. Um, first we have running mode, which is really your reverse and brake settings. So you have um, your running mode. Drag brake, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can set your voltage cutoff. If you're brave and you want to get that extra one minute, you can bring it down to three volts per cell. Um, I would leave it at the default 3.2. Uh, we have the DD or DRRS punch, which is really starting power. Um, it has nine levels. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. And so. Six right here is about perfect for me. You get no cogging without, you know, spinning the wheels in the dirt. But if you were out on a really loose, loose surface, you might want to crank this down. You got a really heavy vehicle, you can crank it up. It's a um, nice thing to play with. You have brake force, maximum brake, uh, maximum reverse, and initial brake. Um, this shouldn't be confused with drag brake. This is like brake punch. You can crank this all the way down if you want to um, really smooth out the brakes or you can bring it way up if you want to just uh, bring your car to a screeching halt. Uh, I would say usually drag, pick, drag brake is where you want to leave it. Um, neutral range. Your timing. This is like turbo mode. Um, again, you have 10 levels or 9 levels of timing. Uh, lower ones give you a cooler motor, uh, but slightly less power. Higher, you're starting to heat up the system, but you can eke a little bit more power out too. Uh, motor rotation, you can flip it in case switching the wires is too much trouble. Um, and finally, LiPo cells. Uh, this one's pretty important. You can set it to auto calculate, but that only does two and four. Um, I'm not sure who would use two cells with this super beefy controller. It's kind of a waste, but you could. Um, using If you're switching between three and four, auto is useless because it's just going to stay on four, uh, which is going to break your batteries. Or actually, you're not going to go anywhere, and if it detects two, it's going to break your batteries. Either way, it's a bad deal. So you want to set that yourself. And the final one, restore default. So, as you can see, pretty easy to use, very easy to read. But another feature I didn't talk about there was that you can have multiple profiles. Um, that's definitely something I've never heard of in any of the other um, portable programming units. So you can have, say, a setup for bashing, a setup for racing, um, maybe an on-road setup as well, and you can very quickly retrieve those setting sets um, and program them, in, program them in without a computer. That's pretty awesome. If you want to see this controller in action, um, I've got another video up I recently posted um, called DBX Bash. 
that's using this controller with a um, 3S LiPo, this motor, this setup actually. And um, that should give you an idea of how well it works. To wrap this up, I've been blown away by how well this controller has performed. Um, I'd recommend this for any vehicle that you need tons of power and control for. Um, not even taking the price into consideration, this is the best controller I've ever used, and that includes the um, Mamba Max, Orion, and a couple other brands. This thing is absolutely top-notch, and besides that, who can say no to blue anodized parts?